y'all. Thank you so much for watching Miss Angelic TV, where we talk about everything and want to mean everything. I mean, like episode number 15. And if you are new and this is your first time ever seeing me on YouTube, First of all, I want to say hi. Second of all, I want to say if y'all are like confused, like what you mean by episodes, don't worry. I didn't did a whole series. So you got a whole 14 episodes to catch up with before you really need to watch this video. So don't be afraid to binge watch me while you're at work, while you working out, while you're doing whatever you like to do. Don't be afraid to binge watch me because why? Them videos ain't going no motherfucker where, okay? <laughs> so that being said, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below if you're new to my channel. And also hit that thumbs up button, that way your girl can be all up in these YouTube streets. And hit that notification bell, that way you can be notified the next time I post a video. Don't forget to email me if you have a crazy story that you want me to share anonymously or if you have like like a sticky situation that you in and you really just need like some girl advice type of shit like go ahead on and email me at it's miss angelique tv at gmail.com and i will respond to you anonymously like i said in a video so girl <laughs> we left off my last story time girl i was telling y'all about uh, once again some other antics that Katrina had going on. We talked about the whole car situation, how my husband was always working on her car and then her her son really wasn't fucking with it. You know, he was trying to teach him a little skill here and there. He really wasn't trying to do that. And it also got to a point where Katrina literally stopped asking my husband directly, can he help her fix her car or can he do this or can he do that? She started going through, I didn't say the boy name. She started going through Steven directly. I don't know why, but she just stopped asking. And so it got to a point where my husband was quite frankly and understandably tired of working on her car because it's just like, okay, I'm working on your car for free. You're not paying me to do any of these things. Um, and then whenever I try to get your son out here to learn some stuff so that he could be able to help you, you don't push him to come outside in the garage. You let him to sleep all day. You let him do whatever he want to do. But yet, whenever it's time for your car to be fixed, you want a handout. When my husband was completely fed up and he had it in his mind that I'm not fixing on her car no more. Like her child don't even want to, you know, learn anything. So like, why am I trying to teach somebody else's child like some life skills that they need to know like why am I doing that like I could be doing this with my other kids so that was the mindset that my husband had and my husband eventually told Steven down the line like yeah I hope you remember everything that we was talking about and all of this because I'm not about to be helping you fix on your mama car no more like I'm not doing that and so I feel like and I'm pretty sure Steven eventually told his mama what my husband said which at that point Katrina stopped asking altogether like she didn't ask Steven to ask my husband or anything like that she just stopped asking altogether which we had no problem with like that was a goal that was what he wanted anyway so throughout this time I noticed her low-key throwing slugs on Instagram part of me want to say that it wasn't slugs and a part of me want to say that it was so I don't know, I'ma just, y'all make y'all own decision. But she was posting shit on Instagram and I'm gonna go ahead on and show y'all. Now this first video that I'm getting ready to show y'all is of Katrina. Now I don't know how the fuck I'm gonna blow them faces out bitch, but I figured it out by now. Okay, so y'all seen the video, right? So. I mean, <laughs> I guess she was trying to be funny or whatever. Ha ha, he he. That's very funny. But do you have them niggas that she be fucking with fix on your car? Why are you even posting shit like that whenever you got a million niggas in your back pocket, apparently? Like, I don't even understand why was that even a thing. I feel like she was trying to put on this whole, you know, independent woman type of shit. And I'm just like, okay, girl, like, we know the truth. And then another post, and I'll go ahead and post it now. You want your independent shit so just be mindful keep that same energy whenever that car need major fixing because that car really honestly gave her a lot of problems i'm just gonna lie to y'all that car gave her a lot of issues and she was just lucky enough to have a mechanic in a household which is my husband keep that same energy sis keep that same energy while you over here making it seem like you just doing the damn thing 
keep that same energy so a couple weeks go by and we are approaching my due date my original due date was april 21st or april 22nd i believe yeah it was the 22nd i'm just ready for this pregnancy to be over with i didn't been stressed out this entire pregnancy living up under this household with this girl her kids like i'm ready to have this baby so that i can really just focus on what we need to do which is move right march 26th i noticed that katrina brought dante home from school early and i couldn't understand why like i didn't know you know what was going on um i didn't think of anything like i didn't ask dante no questions or anything like i don't give a fuck it's not my business but i i just peeped that he came home early he didn't seem like he was sick or anything, but I just peeped that he came home early. And so maybe about a day or two later, I just started feeling sick. Like I felt nauseous as fuck. Um, I couldn't hold anything down. Like it, it felt like I had the stomach bug, literally. I just knew it was some type of stomach bug and I'm just like, okay. <laughs> Who the fuck did I get this shit from? Because my kids ain't sick. Like like where I get this shit from but I'm just like okay whatever I'm just treat my symptoms like bitch I felt like I was dying imagine imagine being pregnant and having the stomach bug that is the worst combination ever like bitch I'm already sick as fuck because I'm pregnant and then you bring on a whole stomach bug in a mix like girl it was horrible oh and I just realized I said she picked up Don, Lil Dante from school no she didn't pick up Lil Dante from school I meant to say she picked up Steven from school early and I didn't think of anything so as I'm feeling sick it just kind of dawned on me. I don't know what came over me or what made me think of this bitch, but it just dawned on me like, did I get something from Steven? Cause he did just come home from school early a couple days ago. Like he, he, at this point he back in school, right? Right, like normal, like I ain't hear nothing. At this point he back in school. So I'm just like, okay, whatever. But it just dawned on me. I'm just like, hold the fuck up. Let me text. Let me text Steven and see what's going on. At this point, I've been sick for like a good 24 hours. Now, my son is sick, which at this point, he was my youngest before I had gave birth to my most recent son. And he's puking, throwing up all over the place, shitting and, and shit, bitch. I'm just like, oh. Hell no, no, no. Hell no, nah. like we, we got something, like something is going around this house and I don't know who had it first, but I don't know. So going back to what I was saying, Steven, I was just like, let me just text Steven just to make sure, bitch. So I text him, and as y'all can see by the screenshot, I said, hey, were you sick Tuesday? Tuesday was the day that he came home early. And he was like, yeah, I had a stomach bug. And so I put the hands or palm, face, whatever emoji and said, me and baby G got it now. He like, dang, I'm sorry. And I'm like, it's okay, it's not your fault. Cause honestly, bitch, it wasn't. It wasn't his responsibility to tell me, oh, hey, you know, I got a stomach bug. Like, it wasn't his responsibility. He's a kid. It, if anything, it was the parent's responsibility, just like Miss Nasty, or I'm sorry, just like Katrina bought little Dante home a couple weeks ago prior to the situation. And he had pink eye and he touching on everything. She ain't sanitizing nothing or she ain't telling me nothing. And then that ended up causing my son to catch pink eye. So this is all like coming back to me. I'm just like this nasty bitch. Like why wouldn't you say something? Like that is highly contagious. Do you not know that? Like he in the kitchen washing dishes. Still like that's that's what I mean. Like I didn't realize he was sick because he was acting perfectly normal. Nobody told me anything. So what am I going to you know think but honestly whenever i text him and ask him was he sick tuesday i wasn't expecting him to say yeah i was expecting i just thought it was me overthinking like i always fucking do no bitch my overthinking was on point i'm irritated because i cannot eat the previous night i was up to like four o'clock in the morning just throwing up and going back and forth to the bathroom because i was really that uncomfortable like it was bad girl i'm also in my third trimester of pregnancy like i'm at the end bitch i'm getting down to the wire and it's pregnancy and and a bitch got a stomach bug like what the fuck so i'm crying i'm hysterical because i'm first of all I'm miserable as fuck second of all i'm irritated because this could have been prevented i finally start feeling better at this point anything that katrina did or didn't do no longer surprised me it was just something that i would just mentally taking note of or physically taking note of because like i told you i was taking notes i was taking notes on some of these situations because i knew i would tell the story at some point yeah i'm mad but bitch like what what can you expect it's not like she has never done this before like she just nasty she doesn't care about anybody's health 
clearly let, let's let's get back on that topic i don't know if y'all if you watching this and you didn't watch all of the story time especially if you didn't watch story time number four you're not gonna know what the real tea is because i've really been talking about her like having men casually in and out the house as if she don't have a disease like let's start there the hiv didn't go away bitch to her and her mind maybe because she was undetectable to her maybe it went away but to me and everybody else who knows her tea we knew she didn't give a fuck about nobody's health and didn't even give a fuck about her own health clearly because i mean it's not her fault that she uh, well maybe it is her fault that she catch hiv i don't know because she was a hoe and i'm pretty sure if she was a hoe after the hiv she really was a hoe before the hiv like i, I told y'all she was into them sex parts and all of that shit prior to darius child like she <laughs> she was <laughs> katrina within them streets okay none of this is surprising me that she cares about no one's health like i'm not surprised i'm not surprised at all fast forward child i also plan to work my entire pregnancy fuck all of that taking off my last month i need that money okay i need any penny that i can get to go towards this move out of the house with this whole fund when it's time to move we want to have everything ready anything that y'all need bitch we got it every single paycheck i was putting towards that get out of the house with that whole fun because i have to get out that house with that hoe toward the end of your pregnancy you tend to go to the doctor quite frequent you go from every month to every three weeks to every two weeks to every week and so at this point i was in my weekly visits and you know i went to one of my visits i don't remember how many weeks i was at that time but whatever visit it was bitch i was like two to three centimeters dilated i was like okay all right baby gonna go ahead on it make your way into this world because mama got some things to take care of okay <laughs> i walked around really like two to three centimeters dilated for a good two weeks or so like i was just walking around like ain't nothing was going on down there like I, as if i wasn't about to give birth still working easter was getting ready to come up and i had been getting easter stuff for the like since probably like february that year like i just knew because every year i'd be like oh i'm gonna get my kids easter baskets and then by the time easter come i end up waiting to the last minute and ain't nobody got no easter baskets so i'm just like fuck that i'm making my kids all six of my kids easter baskets this year and so i was like getting little things here and there for the easter basket and this one particular night Specifically the night before Easter y'all went to bed everything was fine But for some reason I kept waking up to contractions. I'm just like bitch. Why the fuck? I thought maybe they were Braxton Hicks because they weren't like super super painful But they were painful enough to kind of like wake me up. I got a high pain tolerance So I can't really say it was too too painful as I'm having these contractions It feels like my bladder is being pressed on while I'm having a contraction So every single time I have this I gotta go to the bathroom. So <laughs> I'm getting up in and out of my sleep to go to the bathroom and getting up in and out of my sleep moaning and groaning because i'm having a contraction then i go right back to sleep after that and my husband he stay up all night sometimes because he just so used to being up all night because of the military and because bitch he worked overnight so he was up my husband was like you good you gotta go to the hospital like what's going on and i'm just like no nah, i'm not about to go to nobody's hospital because at this point probably like i've already have been to the hospital probably two or three times thinking i was in labor and i wasn't and if you ever been pregnant you Y'all already know when you ready to have that baby and you go to the hospital thinking it's time and it's not really time and they send your ass back home that's the worst feeling ever so i'm just like look i ain't got time to be going to nobody's hospital for no reason i gotta finish making my kids easter baskets tomorrow is easter like i don't have time i'm going back to bed okay girl went back to bed and honestly it felt like it just got worse i'm just like okay <laughs> i know i said what i said but these contractions are still, bitch i ain't got my wedding ring on Mm, have to fix that real quick i forgot i took it off to do my hair i'm just like yeah i don't know about this these contractions are a little bit you know kind of painful but i still knew that my goal was to make those easter baskets so i'm just like let me make these easter baskets you know how sometimes you move around you walk around and things change or you know your body go back to normal i was thinking maybe that was gonna happen so i had my daughter help me with the easter basket and i think i have a picture of it it wasn't nothing special but it was special to my kids and nonetheless they did enjoy them me and my daughter we finished setting up the easter baskets and so i told my husband just like look i'm just about to drive myself to the hospital real quick i'm pretty sure they're gonna send me home so you ain't gotta worry about coming with me just stay here with the kids and if something changed then obviously you just gotta make your way to the hospital but i'm just going by myself stay at home with the kids i'll be back girl i go to the hospital they check me in and the first thing that they did was check my cervix and at this point i was a full three so i'm just like oh okay so my doctor was saying i was like a two and a three not really a three yet 
um but at this point i was an actual three and so doctor was like okay we're just gonna monitor you for hours see if you progress if you don't progress and we you know basically you already know what the deal is you're gonna go your ass home i'm just sitting there chilling on my phone looking at houses y'all i have no idea how i managed to forget this one particular part but my husband and i were actually beginning to look at how this before i gave birth we actually went to visit a house in person like to take a look at it which is the video that y'all are seeing right now i ran across this video and i was like oh shit i forgot to tell them about this part so as y'all can see my pregnant ass <laughs> we were looking at a house we did not end up getting this house we did apply for this house unfortunately we didn't get approved for it but this is one of the houses or one of the first houses that we went to see in person even though i knew the lease wasn't up until two and a half months later but bitch i was looking okay i was looking so doctor come back in and they check me again and i'm like praying low-key that i'm dilated <laughs> more because bitch i'm ready to have this motherfucking baby the fuck does i am ready like, i understand this is my fifth baby but i'm ready all right i'm ready <laughs> ended up checking me and a bitch was four centimeters i'm like oh praise god praise god it's time it's time it's time so they was like all right well we we keeping you here um gonna call your doctor see what she want to do blah 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 so i called my husband and i'm just like yeah they keeping me so you might want to make your way over here as soon as possible my husband ended up bringing my children to his sister's house while he come with me to the hospital he could have left them with miss nasty but i'm just or i'm sorry he could have left the kids with katrina but i'm just like mm, nah go ahead and bring them there just in case i had a baby you know I don't know what she got going on. I don't know what type of plan she got. He brought the kids over there and then he came to the hospital where I was. By this time, they've already moved me to the labor and delivery room. And I also had to call my mama because my mama was supposed to actually be there in the labor and delivery room. Like that was the plan because my doctor was thinking about inducing me if I didn't have him by a certain time. And so we were kind of planning around that time frame. But girl, apparently Giovanni had his own plan. So I had to call my mom and just like, uh, bad news. I'm probably about to have a baby. <laughs> so she hurried up and booked her ticket so that she can be with me the very next day at least. Um, because she, the plan was for her to come and stay with me and my husband for a while just so she could help us with the baby. Once you go in the labor and delivery room, they kind of ask you what your birth plan is and stuff. I told them, yeah, I'm not doing no medication because apparently a bitch felt like she was a superwoman since I had a natural birth on accident the prior delivery that I had with my last son. So I'm just like, shit, if I could do it on accident, I could do it on purpose. Fuck them motherfucking meds. Like, I'm gonna do this without no medication. I got this shit. So I'm telling the nurses all of that. And I'm like, I don't want no medicine. I don't want nothing. Just let me do this. You know, let me do what I gotta do to get this baby out, okay? So my doctor ended up starting on Pitocin because I, I was like slowly progressing, but not progressing fast enough. And she would ask me if I wanted Pitocin, I'm like, shit, I never had a problem with Pitocin in the past, so go ahead on and give me the drugs, do what you gotta do. So they gave me that stuff. And girl, I barely was contracting, like, I, I felt a little pain, like, it was, you know, it was a little stronger, but it really wasn't that. So girl, them motherfucking nurses came in that hospital room probably about a good three or four times and increasing that Pitocin. Every single time they came in the room, I'm giving them side out like, bitch, I'm looking at the motherfucking monitor myself. Like, you can see how many units you are given. And so, bitch, I'm looking at it like, I know what the fuck I'm reading, don't know shit, but all I know is whatever number that was before, it was a lower number. And I just know they keep increasing it. And so, my stepsister ended up coming and visiting me, her and her husband. And they ended up coming uh, to visit. This is before I even had him. So this is before I even gave birth. So I'm still in active labor. They came. They came in the room. They, I didn't even know the, the hospital even allowed that. Bitch, they let us have company. Like, we, we in there chopping it up, talking. I'm, you know, having contractions in the middle of these conversations. And... It, it went from me being active in the conversation and everybody talking to me being completely quiet and I was completely quiet because bitch, them contractions was kicking my ass. And so that's one contraction 
bitch i felt that and i felt it down there i felt it all the way down there. it felt like i was gonna take a shit on accident like i wasn't purposely trying to take a shit my body was just like trying to push whatever was in the well obviously we know what was in there was baby but my body was literally trying to push all of that out and i'm just like mm, okay i remember last time this happened I was crowning so I tell my husband I couldn't even get it out my mouth I just kept pointing at my ass I just kept pointing at my ass my sister and them they still in the room I just kept kept pointing I'm just like pressure 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 that's all I could get out of my mouth at this point because I was in so much pain and so my husband told my sister and her, and her husband he was like all right y'all it's about that time he already knew the routine from last time when i started talking about that pressure that means bitch whatever is in me is about to come out of me all right and so we pressed the button for the nurses to come in my sister and her husband she stepped away for a little bit while we did what we have to do so the doctor bitch she didn't even need to check me because the moment i opened them up legs open what do you know a little baby head i got a little fuzz buzz down there and it wasn't mine it was his and you know they set you up and all of this shit and i couldn't talk i couldn't do nothing i barely could scream to each his own but whenever you be looking at some tv shows and they people be in labor and they be hollering and screaming bitch i could barely do that like i didn't even have enough strength to holler i could barely talk i could barely speak i can hear you i can hear everything that's going on but i can i respond absolutely the fuck not nope i can't i can't do, i could barely even nod my head bitch like i just it was it was painful but it was all worth it it was all worth it because i probably pushed maybe a good three or four times and boop there he go he was out and i'll post some clips and pictures of him there uh how, how many pounds he was i think he was uh six pounds 13 ounces but yeah girl he came out just a little chocolate thing um and yeah i gave birth to my fifth child physically as y'all know i have two bonus daughters before me and my husband got married we both had two kids of our own and then bitch we got together and had three more so seven of us i mean well not us it's seven of them it's, it's it's nine of us total i would not trade it for the world this mama shit really be kicking my ass like when do you catch a fucking break especially being a mom working from home and it's like you gotta be a mama at home and you also gotta be an employee too and your kids don't give a fuck that she yeah at work they all they see is that she at home like the fuck you at home you ain't working you work for us mama the fuck you don't work for them you are a slave my baby he breastfed like a champ or breastfeeds i'm gonna speak in present because he's still on that titty. normally they'll kind of help you nurse and be like oh do you want to do skin to skin mom the girl already knew what it was the nurse had stepped out for a second and then by the time she came back in two minutes later my baby was already on that titty bitch he, he knew it's like he was here before like he already knew what was up he already knew that when he came out of my womb he was gonna be sucking on some titties and that's what he did the nurses were just like oh wow you're already nursing i'm just like yeah i know i, I know what to do now i didn't breastfeed all my babies i know what to do this ain't my first rodeo it might look like it because every time i tell somebody how many kids i got they be like five or when i hit them with a seven they be like seven girl yeah i mean two of them i didn't give birth to but the fuck i gave birth to most of them <laughs> my husband he bought his damn playstation like usually other hospitals that i've been at they would usually move me to a smaller room after i had the baby but baby this hospital shout out to st luke they let us keep that room like we was in that big ass labor and delivery room the whole time my husband bought his playstation child he on his playstation in a cut in a little corner my mom ended up coming that very next day she made it to the hospital and she was so happy to see the baby even though unfortunately she couldn't be there for the actual birth itself but that was okay it was okay she was there for him like she i was still in the hospital whenever she came so um she was so excited about that and my mama ended up she didn't stay the night at the hospital with me she ended up going to the house with my children i was in the hospital for about two and a half days the next day i ended up being able to go home yay i don't know for me hospital visits after you have a baby is always bittersweet because it's just like bitch you ain't gonna have to help no more even though the nurses do be getting on your nerves coming in there every three hours like you really ain't gonna have that shit at all and when you go to this house you on your own bitch like that's it 
that is a wrap but girl yeah my mama ended up staying for a good two weeks she ended up coming back though she um stayed for two weeks and then left and came back a couple weeks later but my mom stayed there she would ask for the baby bitch it'd be eight o'clock in the morning my mom texted me hey i'm up you can bring the baby anytime you want <laughs> um and i really really appreciate her help because she helped me so much because my husband he was still working like he had a week off i believe or not even a week i think he had a couple days off after i gave birth and then he had to go back to work so my mom being there really really helped me a lot she cooked for me and the kids cleaned up and that was another thing that was pissing me off oh I was cleaning up behind other people's kids and i told i have to tell my mom I'm like mama don't do that don't do that i don't even do that for my own kids i make my own kids do do this shit so like don't do that don't be cleaning up behind these kids they have their own stuff their own chores they know what to do i appreciate it but don't worry about it all right whenever i came to the house the first day whenever i came home girl i walk in a damn room and i see balloons and a gift on a bed and i'm gonna go ahead on and show y'all the picture because y'all know i took a picture all right y'all know i took a motherfucking picture because i have sent it to my best friend and now i have to tell my other best friends because y'all are my best friends too girl look at this shit if we were sexing it would have been a little bit like a bitch guess what this girl had on my bed whenever i came home from the hospital she had a little balloon or whatever i think it was two balloons actually and um the gift it was like a uh, towel set a blanket and maybe like two outfits you know it was cute or whatever i was thankful and don't get me wrong like the fuck she didn't have to do that i was still rolling my eyes at the same time i ain't gonna lie i was definitely rolling my eyes you know but i did tell her thank you <laughs> she didn't have to do that but she did i still was ready to get the fuck on though and you remember i was telling y'all i was looking for houses while i was in labor and shit i ended up applying to a house actually while i was in labor and girl by the time i got back home from the hospital i noticed they had emailed us they denied us i'm just like oh hell here this shit go whenever you're applying for home shit not gonna always go smooth the first time sometimes you gotta pick a couple houses you know so that first denial honestly was very discouraging to me because I'm just like damn I thought it was gonna be a little easy like we got the money now we gotta make sure we fucking get approved. But I really started to feel some type of way because I'm just like look I just want to leave this house I just want to move out like that's all I want. I do lord would like please lead me to the right house <laughs> that's gonna approve us like lead me to the right realtor that's another thing i had hired a realtor and i paid him for like background checks paid him i paid him for a lot of stuff just for him to like apply for a bunch of houses in bulk for us and a lot of the houses that he was applying for like either they got bought out or we just didn't get approved it was not a smooth journey i'm just gonna be real honest with y'all it was not smooth because at the time my credit was trash my husband on the other end was he's good by himself but my credit is not as good so i started to feel like okay maybe if i leave myself off these applications just put my husband name maybe that's gonna be a little better so that's what i started to do after i realized we were getting denied because i ended up applying to another place right afterwards and the same thing we got denied so i started to so feel like okay maybe it's me let me tell y'all y'all young adults out here please don't fuck up your credit when you young because i guarantee you whenever you get up there in age like i am knocking on motherfucking 30 bitch like you are gonna want to actually start investing in yourself and you're gonna want to start doing things that money is not gonna always get you yeah you can have all the money in the world but do you got the credit you know what i'm saying so that's that was one thing i didn't think about throughout this entire experience like i didn't think about the fact that okay yeah bitch y'all got a couple thousand dollars saved up but do you got the credit <laughs> you know what i'm saying i fucked myself up so bad whenever i was with ghosts and if you like who the fuck is ghosts i've been doing story times for years <laughs> i've been doing story times since 2016 so if you don't know who ghost is i got a whole story time series for you to watch and binge on because i know this story time series gonna come to an end in a little bit so go ahead and go to that playlist that's a whole nother story but yeah if y'all remember that series y'all know i did a lot of moving i went from one spot to the next i moved three times over a course of 10 months that i was with that guy and it fucked me over in the long run it did but um i'm working on it you live and you learn and then i also started to feel like baby blues like i don't really necessarily want to call it postpartum depression because that's a big word that's a strong word i've been there already and i've done that y'all already know i got a video about that too if 
in case you didn't know bitch got a video about everything that i've been through at this point <laughs> um but i really feel like the fact that we weren't getting approved as quick as i wanted us to get approved that started to make me feel depressed because i'm just like fuck I i'm taking care of this baby i'm dealing with the emotions of just giving birth and like whenever you just give birth your hormones are all fucked up bitch your body's trying to fight to be the old bitch that you was before instead of the new bitch that you was whenever you was pregnant and so like everything is just not meshing and not going the way that I wanted it to go so I did feel I, I felt really down I, I remember one time I just was crying and my husband was just like I just want to leave I just don't want to be here like I hate this house so much like and I feel like I hated it even more bringing a new baby in the home because it's like this house is not a happy home this is not a house where I want to raise my children at this isn't this house is so temporary bitch if temporary couldn't get any temporary or than it was it would be that house like it was it wasn't where I wanted to be but my husband like I said he he was there for me he comforted me he was like look just keep trying like we got some money that, that was the whole purpose of us you know saving and that was another thing i'm spending money on applications like these application fees ain't free bitch <laughs> i'm spending money on that as well so i'm just like fuck thank god we got the money but damn there's always a light at the end of the tunnel you might not be at the end yet bitch and at this point i wasn't at the end i was still like mm, maybe three fourths to the end of that tunnel at this point that i'm talking about right now I couldn't feel it though. I couldn't feel it, but I just kept praying. I, I, I was just like, Lord, I, I need to pray for my sanity first of all, because I feel like I'm about to snap. I really felt like I wanted to snap. Although all of this in the house was going on prior to me giving birth, it's like the moment I gave birth, everything just seemed a million times worse. It felt like I had bricks on my chest. Like I just, I felt trapped. I felt like, when is this gonna end? But I kept praying and I, continued to apply and i told my husband had asked like when are we gonna tell katrina and i was just like we're gonna tell her whenever we then got approved for something like i don't want to you know speak too soon and something end up happening i'm just like look let's keep applying whenever we get approved for something then that's when i feel like we're gonna tell her i'm gonna wrap this story time up because uh we still got another episode or two we still got another episode for sure after this so i'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up because the shenanigans did not stop a lot of the story time was really about myself although the whole situation was stressful you know i did end up giving birth to a beautiful baby and although i was feeling the emotions that i was feeling after i had him i still was so thankful to god that i had a healthy pregnancy and that i was just you know good you know I, I was really just thankful for all of that despite it all i was still thankful go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below that way you won't miss my next story time and be a part of the family because why you need to be a part of the, of the crew be a part of the team stop watching me from the recommendations and watch me from your subscription page okay all right there's a difference now there's a difference and also go ahead and hit that thumbs up button that way your girl can get out here and be out here in these YouTube streets and hit that notification bell because you want to be notified the next time I post, okay? We got a whole nother series coming this summer, so I hope y'all ready. The next series that we're going to do, that series is literally going to cover the entire summer. So we are in that thing all summer long. So don't forget to also follow my social medias. That way you can be in a loop with my real life. <laughs> of course, I want to start posting more on Instagram, but like, I don't know. I be seeing y'all follow me and stuff. But I don't be knowing, like, if, are y'all following me because y'all a subscriber or y'all follow me because something? I don't be knowing. So, if you follow me on Instagram, don't be afraid to send me a message. If you made it to the end of this video, that's because you are day one. <laughs> and I appreciate it. So, real quick, do me a favor. After this video, go ahead and follow me. If you're not already doing so, go ahead and follow me on Instagram at Miss Angelique TV. And send me a message. That way I can go ahead and add you to my close friends. Because I am going to create a close friends community for all of my YouTube subscribers. I want to dedicate stuff for y'all specifically. So, and you know, whenever it comes to certain updates that y'all may not know before youtube knows like that that's the whole point so go ahead and message me 
on Instagram right now while you're thinking about it. That way I can add you to my close friends. Just say, hey girl, hey girl, just finished watching the video. And I just want to be added to the close friend family. That's all you got to say. And also don't forget to send me an email if you have any crazy ass stories you want me to retell anonymously. Or if you have some crazy ass situations that you need help out of. Okay. I love y'all so much. Thank y'all so much for watching. And I'm going to see y'all in my next video.